Hello. <laughs> Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Houseplant friends. I didn't even say that. <laughs> Hello, houseplant friends. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today, we're doing a bit of a different setup. I thought that this looked really lush. I was taking some pictures for my Instagram. It just feels like I can't just take a selfie. I feel like I have to actually take pictures for it now because there's 13,000 of you there. So follow me on Instagram, by the way. It's at plantmeashley. Today, we're going to talk about popular plants that I don't think are worth the hype. Does this mean that you can't think that they're worth the hype? Absolutely not. What does it mean? That I don't think they're worth the hype. So you can leave all your mean comments in the comments section. We're gonna go ahead and get started here, class. Okay, the number one on this list is the Hartley Fern. My biggest reason for this is that you cannot stop this plant from crisping. I have two of these. One of them, my patron gifted to me, and the other one is over there. It looks exactly the same as this. The plant's alive, it's giving me new leaves. These ones are crisp, and I do not understand. I keep them right next to my humidifiers. All the old leaves crisped, so I don't know. I don't know why, I don't know how to stop it, but it will crisp. And I have also had a third one. I had a third one a year ago, back in the very, very, very beginning, and the same thing happened. It just didn't wanna cooperate. The other thing is that it requires constant wetness. This plant doesn't want to get dry at all. It wants to be literally sopping wet at all times. And if you do, if, if you let it dry out for just like a couple hours, she's gonna end it, okay? Other than that, it's a really good plant. They're very inexpensive. The most recent one I got for like five bucks at Lowe's. So that's why it's at the top of the list. We're kind of working our way down to the worst, in my opinion. The next house plant on this list is Monstera Spa Peru. You're gonna see a couple of Monstera on this list. Oh, don't steal my video ideas, by the way. I just realized I folded this in half and I'm like waving it around. Monstera Spa Peru. My biggest problem with this plant is it does not root. The shortest amount of time I think I have rooted this plant, it took me eight and a half months. And that was just to get roots from a cutting I took from my big plant. I, you know what, I don't think I ever even saw new growth. I think I kept it for a couple more months after that and then I was like, you know what, does anyone want this? Because I am sick of it. It's literally, you just are gonna have a jar full of Monstera Spa Peru forever. So. If you're down with that, then that's cool, but I am not down with that. Um, the other problem is that this plant is extremely expensive. I wrote better notes on my phone. I consolidated them. I sent them to my patrons, like my notes, because I give them a little heads up on what videos I'm making and they get a little sneak peek of them. So if you want to join my Patreon, it's patreon.com forward slash point me Ashley. I did a little bit. Okay. It's extremely expensive. So the cost of a Monstera Spa Peru, if you're going to import it, is going to be around $40 to $50. Plus you need the phytosanitary certificate, which is always $50. So you're looking at $90 to $100. We're not even talking about tax yet, right? <laughs> or the shipping cost. But in America, they're like $60 to $70. They don't really grow that fast. You can't root them to share with your friends. Unless you're getting a variegated one. Like, those are sick, and I would put in the effort for that, but these aren't even the variegated ones, okay? They also, like, you'll have it for a year. From what I've seen from other people is they grow really fast once you get them to grow, which is why people love them so much. And I'm not, and I'm totally fine waiting for growth, right? But the Monstera Spa Peru doesn't really seem like a plant that should need that much time to grow. I am all. The next house plant on my list is the Epicremnum panatum albo variegata. I have a bone to pick with this plant. First of all, I traded mine. I had one. Okay, this is Epicremnum panatum sebu blue, right? Imagine you just had one stem of this plant. I'm trying to separate one. Imagine that you just had this one stem, okay? That's your whole plant. And then it's variegated. That's how people sell it. They don't sell them in buckets like they sell Cebu Blue, you get one stem. How much does that one stem cost, Ashley? Oh, I don't know. When I bought mine, it was like $400. But I got it for 50% off, so I paid 200. But its original listed price was $400 for one stem with two variegated leaves. And you could be like, well, Ashley, that's, you know, a pretty rare plant. It's not that rare. I've gone to a house plant shop before that literally sold them. Like it's about as rare as a Monstera Albo. You can find them on eBay, you can find them on Etsy. They're uncommon to see, but are they rare? No, they're not botanically rare. So should they have that kind of a price tag? In my opinion, no. What is my other problem with this plant? And yes, I know I'm getting very animated. I am upset with this plant. My problem is that the white always 
melts off. I had that plant grow probably like seven to eight leaves for me. Whenever it got any white on its leaves, it just melted off. Like, it's not like monstera leaves, right? Epipremnum panatum leaves are thin. So what does that mean? It means that they're going to be very delicate plants. And so if you want it to be variegated, it's just gonna melt unless you have perfect conditions. I mean, maybe, you know, it's probably worth the hype if you're an experienced collector, but is this a plant that you should get even within your first year or two of collecting? No, absolutely not. Its difficulty level is way too high, it's way too expensive, and the payoff is low. I always just had to try to cut off the melting parts of the white areas to try to save my plant from just rotting all the way, and then I, you know what I did? I had a very expensive plain green Epicremnum panatum that I paid $200 for. The next houseplant on this list is the Monstera Thai Constellation. Ashley, you may be wondering, why is the Monstera Thai Constellation on your list? You have Monstera Borzigiana Albo Variegata, and we know that you've had Monstera, Borzigi Monstera Deliciosa Albo Variegata. So Ashley, why is this on your list? I'll tell you why it's on my list. My problem with this plant is it is twice as expensive as Monstera Borzigiana or Monstera Deliciosa Albo Variegata in most cases. My second problem is it is an extremely delicate plant. I don't know a single person, which now you're all gonna flood the comments and be like, I was able to keep mine alive and I was able to keep mine alive. I don't know a single person in my life who has bought a Thai Constellation and then was able to keep their first one alive. Also, Thai constellations are bred like excessively. So because of that, most of the nodes that you're gonna find of Monstera Deliciosa Albo Variegata that you can just like buy in those chunks are actually Thai constellation nodes. And most of the time they're rotting. For some reason or another, they're rotting and it just burns my butt. So between how expensive they are, how delicate they are, and just the fact that plain and simple, they are not as pretty as Monstera Borzigiana or Monstera Deliciosa Alba Vergata. In my opinion, not worth the hype, not worth your money, but I know that a lot of people love Thai Constellation more than they love Deliciosa Vergata, so. I have to keep checking the battery because your girl forgot to charge batteries, so we're working against the clock here. The next houseplant on my list is the Calathe White Fusion. Ashley, you may be wondering yet again. You talk all the time about how much you love this plant. Well, listen, it's a toxic relationship, okay? Me and the Calathe White Fusion have a very toxic relationship. In fact, the one that I have that is alive right now is over there and it's doing terrible and you just saw it the other day in a video. The other one that I had that was doing incredible and staying alive that you saw in my tour got spider mite infestation and literally died. <sighs> so I kept it alive in every way that it needed to live and it found another way to die on me. <laughs> so I'm a little salty, but I have a connection with that plant again because like I've said a thousand times, it's the first plant that Christopher ever bought for me. He just thought it looked pretty and so he got it for me. So whenever I see that plant, it makes me think of Christopher. So I wish it would just stay alive so I could keep the plant because I really like it. But um, also it's very expensive. They can be up to 30 to $50 depending on what retailer you're getting it from. Not retailer, seller you're getting it from. And they're extremely delicate. So you just gotta be careful. You gotta know that you're playing with fire when you're spending your money on that plant. The next houseplant on my list is Sansevieria. It is no secret on this channel that we don't like Sansevieria. I have my Bantel Sensation and I have a whale fin. That is all. And do I even like those plants? Really? No. I normally forget about them in houseplant tours. Why do I have them? Because they're easy, low maintenance houseplants. They're low light plants and they kind of just liven up the area back here. But I don't think that they're they should be popular. I don't think that they should be as expensive as they are. Whale fin sansevarius at the beginning of this year and the end of last year were like 70 to 100 dollars. Like it's a it's a sansevaria. It's a root. It's just going to sit there and not do anything and it's not even that cute. It's just kind of like woo. And so everyone thinks it's cool. At least the Bantel sensation is basically like white. That's sick. Should not be popular. I am The next houseplant on my list is String of Turtles. I got a bone to pick with this plant, all right? Someone left a comment the other day and I haven't gone through my comments yet to answer them. So I'm sorry if this is you. Ashley, where did your string of turtles go? I noticed it wasn't in your tour. I had to get rid of it. She had a spider living inside of the soil. It dug itself some tunnels. <sighs> I had to get rid of it. I'm so sorry. Also, it was literally balding because I kept it on a shelf. 
So everywhere except for the front, like one eighth of the plant was completely bald and dead. Also, my other problem with this plant is unless you can get lucky, like crazy lucky, and find a big basket of it for 20 to $15 at Lowe's, it will cost you anywhere from $30 for a one to two inch pot, this big, little, tiny, 30 to $50 for that, or like $100 for a normal pot. Someone tell me why that's a thing. Why is that literally allowed? Also, if you forget about him, it'll die. All right, we're, we're really racing against the clock here. We got 11% of the battery left. Okay, the next houseplant on my list is Munster Adamsonii. The whole reason for this one is, I mean, it's a gorgeous plant. I love the narrow form, it's incredible. My problem with this plant is that I have never gotten this plant and had it not get mealybugs. I don't know why it is so ridiculously prone to mealybugs, but it just is. It just always gets it. So do I want to spend $50 on a six inch basket? Basket? On a six inch basket of Monstera Adamsonii just for it to die to mealybugs? Heckin no. No, I don't. Next plant. The next plant is Fiddle Leaf Fig. My problem with this plant is that if you have a house that has any kind of airflow at all, this plant will drop all of its leaves and you will be a sad, sorry mama or dada or dad or daddy. Anyways, this plant, if you give it too much air, it will die. If you give it too much light, it will die. If you give it too much water, it will get that little red speckly stuff and die, okay? So they're also crazy expensive. Like the cheapest ones you can find at Lowe's are like, like what, $30 for a six inch pot and it's like kind of in terrible shape or you can spend $300 and get a tree. What kind of range is that? The next houseplant on this list and the last houseplant on this list is Raven's Easy. Why actually, you have a Raven's Easy. You actually have a couple Raven's Easy's. Here's my issue. They will put out maybe one trunk a year and last year when they were all the craze and I bought one, guess how much money I paid? Guess how much money I paid? I paid $75 for this plant. Do you know how expensive that is? Do you know how many Hoyas you could buy with that? With Raven's Easy, you're lucky if it puts out maybe one shoot a year. Like, also, I think it's incredible that people are finding them at cost everywhere. I have mine somewhere. I don't know where I put it. I love that you can find them for like $15 now at Costa. I think that that's a price point that is a lot more reasonable. But anyways, those are the house plants that I do not think, those are the popular, oh my God, I cannot talk. Those are the popular house plants that I do not think are worth the hype. Let me make sure I didn't miss anything. Oh, one other plant I forgot is Monstera Standaliana. My problem with this plant is it's got a crazy weird growth pattern and it grows incredibly slow. Also, there's no way to really maintain the variegation on it if it goes all white. Oh, the Monstera Standaliana Albo Variegata is the one I was talking about. If it goes all white, you basically have to wait seven months for it to put out a new growth because it grows so slow. And then you have to hope that it went back to being variegated. Also, they're crazy expensive. They can be up in the hundreds of dollars, like if you're lucky. I think the cheapest I got was like a four inch one with three leaves and I paid like 80 bucks for that like a year ago. Anyways, that is my list of top 11 house plants that, I, that are popular. Wow, I can't talk. Please let me know if you agreed with me, if you disagreed with me, I'd love to hear what plants you think are popular that you do not think oh my god I'd love to know what popular house plants that you do not think are worth the hype down in the comment section down below please support me on patreon if you can if you can't I totally understand but that helps out with the channel so 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 much and helps me do this full time follow me on instagram at plant me ashley and I'll see you guys in the next house plant section sorry this video was rushed but we're literally I'm sure the battery might even be dead right now like I don't know so okay thanks for watching Bye. Oh my God, we did it. <laughs> Y'all, we really made it. 4% left. Maybe we can take a cute photo.